In today's video, we'll be going over my top four monthly paying dividend stocks. And a lot of that is because I only own four monthly paying dividend stocks. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Bruce Wang for anybody that is brand new. Monthly paying dividend stocks are a great way to just jump in the market. Uh, that is how I actually got started investing in individual stocks. Previously, I think it's more efficient if you start investing with index funds and or ETFs. That's how I began. And then slowly I started shifting into monthly paying dividend stocks. One thing that I want you guys to know is that index fund investing and ETF investing, I think that they're a lot safer, a lot more efficient. And eventually I think even you'll make more profits and gains from that. So monthly dividend paying stocks, how I stumble upon them is because I am a real estate investor. And as a real estate investor that owns uh, two duplexes, I collect rent on a monthly basis. And with that rent, um, I cut out the expenses and everything and I keep whatever is left over and I spend that and I reinvest it or I buy stocks with it or you know I'm buying groceries, McDonald's, Netflix, etc. So getting cash flow on a monthly basis is something that I'm very familiar with, something that I do understand, and that is how I gradually um, transitioned into monthly paying dividend stocks. So let's jump right into the overview of the portfolio. And if you guys want anything that I'm talking about in today's video, plus free stocks, uh, go check out the links below. Webull is giving out free stocks. Robinhood is giving out free stocks. I got a lot of goodies down there that you guys will want to not miss out. All right, so jumping into the portfolio today, my value of the portfolio is sitting just under $63,000 with an annual income when it comes to dividends of 2,483. So if you guys seen last week's video, by one of my most popular videos of me getting $200 worth of dividends every single month, I've increased my annual dividends by about $80 in the last week. So things when it comes to my dividends are starting to uh, speed up a lot faster as I'm getting more comfortable and as I'm starting to learn uh, how to invest in the stock market, all right? Um, the compounding effect is actually working. So here is a quick snapshot of all of my portfolios. I have four different portfolios that I've been testing out. One is the M1 Finance Roth IRA sitting at 13,000. The M1 Finance uh, Wang Gang portfolio sitting at 22,000. The Robinhood portfolio sitting at 25,000. This is the largest one that I have. And the Webull testing out all those free stocks is sitting at $2,300. So now let's get into the top four monthly paying dividend stocks on my Robinhood portfolio. Some things that you guys want to know or should know is that I got into these about two years ago and I'll show you guys my performance ever since I started buying them all the way through the uh, Rona Rona situation crash and uh, all the way till the present day, all right? So my number one monthly paying dividend stock right now has to be Realty Income sitting at $63 and I consider this to be somewhat fair value. So let's take a look at the five year chart. When I first started investing in uh, Realty Income, I was buying it at around 70 to $80 all the way up to $84. I was paying that much for an average share. And when the crash happened, realty income dropped to about $38. So ever since uh, you know March, I've been going really heavy into realty income, trying to get as many shares as I can. And if we take a look at my position right now, it has really paid off. I own 100 shares. Market value is sitting at $63,000. Average cost is at $56 now. So I lowered my average cost by over $20 ever since I first started purchasing Realty Income. And if we look at the total returns, I'm sitting at almost $700 worth of profits, and that is not including all of the dividends that I've received. So jumping into the history of Realty Income, I'm gonna go all the way back, and the first time I ever received the dividends from this company was in November 21st, 2018, and uh, at the time I only owned one share. I wanna show you guys this because we all started at zero. You know, I was once where you guys were when um, I started investing in the stock market. And moving all the way up to the present day, just two days ago, I received $23 worth of dividends from Realty Income. And if I never invest any more money into Realty Income, I'll just, I'll just be collecting that $23 
forever or un until uh, Realty Income stop paying dividends. I own a lot of Realty Income on my Robinhood account as well, and I own 50 shares of Realty Income on my M1 Finance portfolio. So if you guys want to check out all the stocks that I own, go into the links below, and you guys can even view all of the stocks in my M1 Finance portfolio as well. So right now, I wanna get into the dividend safety score when it comes to Realty Income, and I kinda wanna go over all of the pros and cons uh, that I believe that uh, Realty Income will be facing in the future. Some of the pros is that the dividend yield is relatively safe at a 4% range. Uh, dividend safety score is at 70, so that is also really good. That's one of the uh, biggest factors that um, helps me stay confident in investing Realty Income. Also, when we take a look at the dividend growth, 3% last year, but in the last 20 years, the dividend growth has been pretty good. Let's check out the dividend growth of the last 20 years. We can see that there's a 5% gain on average every year when it comes to um, their dividend growth. And uh, dividend growth streak is sitting at 25 years, uninterrupted dividend streaks of 25 years plus uh, without a dividend cut. So this is a really big factor when it comes to um, me choosing realty income and going investing in them. Some of the concerns that I have for the future of realty income is that they are a brick and mortar type business. What I mean by that is that a lot of the tenants that um, they lease out their buildings to or their properties to, those companies have now been completely changed because of the Rona Rona situation. So here's a list of the top 20 tenants that uh, Realty Income has. They have Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx. So I believe that AMC Theaters, I believe a lot of these companies have are will now be completely changed because of the Rona Rona situation, especially AMC Theaters. This company could potentially go bankrupt in the next few years, who knows? Um, going down, Walmart, Sam's Club, Lifetime Fitness, who knows how the fitness industry will recover from this, especially if you know the situation with the Rona Rona gets worse. So to me, the biggest downside is that there is just so much uncertainty and fear uh, when it comes to all of the tenants and all of these businesses. A lot of the new businesses that have been doing well over the last few months are like Zoom, big tech companies like Amazon, Google. Those are the type of companies that um, are resistant to the pandemic. But um, the ones that are listed here, these tenants, you know, it's very uncertain who will come out on top and who won't. And I believe that some of them will go bankrupt. One good news is that uh, they just released a press detail here where they said that they collected roughly around 80% of the contractual rent from May 2020 from the, the top 20 tenants. And on top of that, they collected 98.2% of contractual rent um, from May 2020 from investment grade tenants. So to me, this is really good news for Realty Income. They're collecting most of their rents. Even for me, myself, I'm still having trouble collecting rents from uh, my tenants. Uh, right now, a lot of them are paying late because they've been unemployed and um, you know just out of a job for a while. So moving on to the second monthly paying dividend stock that I love. It's gonna be SPHD, PowerShares, S&P 500, high dividend, low volatility. Uh, currently, the price is sitting at just under $35. And I have a actual love-hate relationship with this um, ETF because even though they're paying monthly dividends, um, they have been really underperforming over the last you know, year to date. So what do I mean by this? I like to compare SPHD to um, VOO, which is the S&P 500. In the last three months, we can see that it's not really that comparable. Um, VOO is a 30% gain and um, SPHD is only 20% gain in the last six months. Um, there's been a greater loss from uh, SPHD in the year to date. You know, I'm down 21 and if I just invested in a VOO, I would have done a lot better. In the last one year as well, negative 18% gain, 6% up for VOO, and so forth and so on. So when it comes to my position in SPHD, um, currently I own 153 shares. I'm gonna get this up to 200 and that's where I'm gonna be capping out my investment in SPHD. And I'm gonna look for better opportunities. If it's gonna be in the S&P 500, then that's where it's gonna be. Uh, market value right now is sitting at uh, 5,200. Average cost is $38. So I'm down a lot when it comes to SPHD. Um, total return is sitting at 
almost $600, 10%. And that's where I have the love and hate relationship with SPHD. Yes, I'm getting monthly dividends and I get to see some type of return every single month, but I am losing out on a lot of potential gains. So if I track all the dividends from SPHD and uh, my first, the first time I ever collected a dividend was in September of 2018, which I got when I only, when I only owned one share, I got 14 cents. And ever since then, I probably made less than $100 worth of dividends because I only started to recently invest a lot more in the last few months. Um, even with realty income, I made less than $100 when it comes to uh, dividend income. So SPHD is an ETF for anybody that doesn't know. Um, an ETF is a basket of stocks. And uh, these are the top holdings when it comes to um, SPHD. All of these companies are also included in the S&P 500. And once you invest in SPHD, uh, your money will be diversified in all of these companies as well. So for my third monthly paying dividend stock, that is gonna be AGNC Investments. And this investment has not been going that well for me over the last few months. Um, I've been also trying to dollar cost average my way down, trying to get my cost basis as low as possible. And uh, right now, AGNC is at $13. And if we take a look at my position, I own 100 shares. That's where I'm completely capped out in my investment in SPHD. So um, market value right now for all these shares is $1,300. Average cost is at $14.25. So I'm about $1 away from the price when it comes to AGNC investments. One thing I want you guys to take away from this is that if you are going to invest in something that is very risky, don't invest a large position of your entire portfolio. So when it comes to AGNC investments, I think this is like less than 2% of my entire portfolio. And that's where I'm gonna keep it at. It's probably gonna get less um, and less as my portfolio grows in value because I'm not gonna be buying more than 100 shares at the moment. So when it comes to the total return, I'm down 6%, almost $100 uh, loss from my investment so far. So when it comes to the dividends of AGNC, I collected my first dividend back in February of uh, 2019, and um, I got about $10.80 from owning 80 sh uh, 60 shares, and today I'm currently collecting $12. So now let me tell you some of the upside and downside of in owning AGNC in the last two years. Yes, AGNC has a very high dividend yield of 10%, over 10% plus now, but the dividend safety score is very unsafe at a dismal 23 rating. Um, dividend growth is really bad as well, negative 7% in the last year. One upside, in my opinion, is that this is a 7.5 billion market cap, a mid cap stock. So it should not be as volatile as a lot of the other smaller companies out there. So here are some of the major downsides of owning AGNC investments. Um, you're not gonna have any dividend growth, all right? These numbers are all in a negative, so you know, take that for what it is. Dividend growth streak zero, uninterrupted dividend streak zero. And in the last two years that I own AGNC Investments, I had two dividend cuts. This year, they cut their dividends by about two cents every month. And last year, I believe it was also two cents for uh, every single month as well. So the upside is that you're gonna be getting a lot of um, dividends, a lot of cash flow every single month, but performance is really underperforming when it comes to everything else in the market. And on top of that, there is almost no dividend growth. Right now, I believe that AGNC is in a range of undervalued to fair value. I would lower my cost basis by buying more into this company, but um, there is a lot of other companies that I'd rather invest in because they have more potential in growth. So for the last monthly paying dividend stock that I own, it's gonna be PSEC, uh, Prospect Capital, currently sitting at $5.39. So when it comes to Prospect Capital, it has a lot of similar traits to AGNC in my opinion. Um, moving down here, taking a look at my position, I own 202 shares, average cost at $5.79. So when it comes to these shares, I'm not looking to add more onto PSEC at the moment. Um, I think that there's a lot of better opportunities out there. And uh, right now, uh, my market value is sitting at just over $1,000 with a total return of uh, negative $81, a 7% loss on everything that I've invested so far. Even though I've been collecting a lot of dividends from uh, PSEC, my first dividend I received in uh, February of 2019. I owned 156 shares at the time and I got $9.36. 
and uh, all the way up till present day. I probably have just over $100 worth of dividends from them. So in actuality, I've probably broken even just because of dividends alone. Um, currently, I can make $12 in dividends every single month from 200 shares. So let me jump into uh, Simply Safe Dividends again and give you guys some of the upside and some of the downsides. So when it comes to prospect capital, some of the upsides here, dividend yields is very good, 13%. Very unsustainable though. Uh, dividend safety score is at a 30, unsafe. Um, dividend growth, very low, negative 6%. Price right now sitting at $5.38. I believe that this is very similar to AGNC Investments where this is a fair value to somewhere maybe even um, undervalued. Market cap is 2 billion. I wish this was a lot higher but this is one of the smallest market cap stocks that I own. So when it comes to my entire portfolio right now, I'll see an annual income of $145. This is less than 2% of my portfolio and that's where I'm gonna keep it at. It's gonna get less uh, from here on out when I invest more and more into other companies. Uh, dividend growth, zero. Uh, dividend growth streak, zero. Uninterrupted dividend streak, zero. So one thing about PSEC is that ever since I owned them, they have never done a dividend cut, and I hope it stays that way. Um, I really hate dividend cuts. Another upside about PSEC is that it is a business developmental company. So they do a lot of loans. They give loans to small businesses that might not be able to get them through regular financing with a bank. And especially nowadays where a lot of uh, small businesses are going bankrupt, they're gonna need to find a way to pay their employees, pay their suppliers, pay for equipment, pay for their, you know, rents and everything. So, so there is an opportunity there for PSEC to, you know, give more loans to a lot of these companies out there. And for the downsides with really low interest rates, um, they're not going to be making that much money from low interest rates. And the Rona Rona situation, you know, a lot of uncertainty around there as well when it comes to just in general with the entire economy and how businesses will be run uh, in the future. So the main point here that I'm trying to get to you guys is that monthly paying dividend stocks are a great opportunity, especially if you're closer to retirement age. Imagine you own like a million dollars worth of these um, monthly paying dividend stocks. You would be making a lot of income every single month, but there are better opportunities out there and um, monthly paying dividend stocks should only be a very small percentage of your entire portfolio. All right, uh, go watch these videos if you, got, if you guys wanna see more from me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification, join the membership that I just started up, join me on Instagram, join me on my second channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.